Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another video here on the channel. Today we are doing some recommending, some recommendations. I've been filming a lot of book reviews lately and it's been a while since I've done kind of a list of things. So I'm very excited to be bringing you the first of a few videos where I want to be talking about different series that you can get your teeth stuck into. So we're going to talk about duologies today. We will talk about trilogies. I can't remember when. Let me see when that's in my schedule in early February. And we will talk about longer series at some point in the future. I can't see when that is, but it will be at some point in the future. Some quick disclaimers before we start. Some of the books in this stack and that I will be mentioning have been sent to me for free, either as review copies or digital copies or gifted by friends or family. Nobody's paying me to talk about books. All opinions are my own, as usual. Duologies are some of my favourite things. I really feel like the publishing world has really embraced the duology of late. I don't know whether that's because you're more guaranteed to sell two books than three, or if it's just a trend or whatever. I'm very here for it. Having said that, there are a few past duologies on this list, so maybe it's just a thing that I'm just noticing. It's confirmation bias, perhaps. I very much enjoy a duology, don't get me wrong, love a trilogy, love a long series, but there's something about a duology that really I find enjoyable partly because you don't have to wait too long to finish the series, and that's always nice, you can get that ticked off your list, but also I think it's something about how often with a duology, rather than having one narrative across two books, you have two narratives in the same world. Often the second book feels much more like a companion novel. That's not a rule as a whole, that's not something that a duology has to have, but it's something that I've noticed in a lot of the things on this list, and I very much enjoy it. I like getting a complete story, and I think often with trilogies, which we will talk about in a few weeks, uh, you very much get the second book feeling a little bit slower or a little bit different until you've got the third book to complete it, whereas a duology often book one, you can read it and be good, which we will talk about as we go through this list. I have a few, I'm not sure how many, and I dare say more will come to me both while I'm talking about them and while I'm editing this video. So maybe we will do an honourable mentions of all the things I forgot at the end. Editing Judith, how are we feeling about that? Right, editing Judith's already crossed with me because rather than going and getting a lot of these books from downstairs, I've just decided I'm going to edit the covers in. Thank you, future Judith, for your sacrifice. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> First up, because I've talked about them very recently, so we shouldn't probably dwell on them, the Dreamblood duology by N.K. Jemisin. This is an absolutely fantastic duology, and again we do have the, here is the story of book one, this story is very separate, but is based on the events of book one and is the consequences of those actions, and you do need to read both of them, but you could separate the two in your mind. They are two different stories following different characters, I think. Yes. Yes, they are two different characters, I remember. Um, I think these are absolutely fantastic. I will link my video reviewing the two of them so that you can go and enjoy that if you want to know more. I'm gonna pop them behind me. I only have one of them up here, but this is the second book in the Texaclan duology by R.K. D. Martin. This is one of my favourite books that I read in 2021. The duology as a whole is absolutely fantastic. We have A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace. This is absolutely fantastic sci-fi that's kind of themes of empire, unsurprisingly, uh, and what really draws these two together is not only are we following some of the same characters, and again, a lot of the problems that come up in book two are because of things that happened in book one, but they are two very different stories. And what I think really ties these two together are the themes and the ideas that are explored. And having the second book just really allows you to dig even more into them. And it's just an absolutely fantastic extra bit to the story. that like You can read the first book, have a wonderful time, and you're left with maybe a few questions that you could fill in the answers for yourself. And this just gives you a little bit more closure. And I was really surprised by how much meat was in this book. There's so much. It would make a fantastic book club duology because there's just so much to talk about. I'd love to do a reread of these and like have a proper chat about them at some point in the future. I had to say that a lot about a lot of things. Am I ever going to do it? I don't know. But do you want an amazing sci-fi duology to dig your teeth into? This is one of them. Yes, it's fantastic. If you're looking for some YA that if you haven't already read it or you are, haven't heard of it, I'd be very surprised. But the Six of Crows duology, the... Is it actually called the Six of Crows duology? I don't know what the duology is called. I'm just realising this now. Um, I'll put the covers up. You know what I mean. Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, part of the Grishaverse by Lee Bardugo. Some people love them. Some people don't. Some people are probably a little bit too obsessed with them. You know who you are. I'm looking at you. If you haven't heard about these, they're kind of YA heist... A uh, band of people band together to do a thing in book one and in book two. And again, we have that thing of book one can be a complete thing. Book two will be better, which actually, now I'm thinking about it, is something that quite frequently happens in duologies for me. 
In fact, all of the ones I've mentioned so far, I think book two has been stronger, but they are fairly contained. I would say there's more of a through narrative in this than in anything else. And I think that's something that features more in YA duologies, but they're really good fun. I wouldn't say that they're the, the be all and end all of YA fiction or that they are the best thing that's ever been written, which I know some people would argue, um, but they are they are probably my favourite Lee Bardugo books. They're the ones I've hung on to, having owned quite a lot of them over the past few years. And I'm very excited to see how they play out on television uh, because I'm enjoying that series greatly. I'm pretty sure everyone who wants to read them has already read them, but it would feel weird not to mention them on this list. Speaking of YA duologies, let's talk YA sci-fi. Now this is a series that the second book has very recently released. When is it out? Yes, last week, in fact, the second one released. This is, I should tell you what it is, um, Seven Devils and Seven Mercies by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May. Uh, this is a YA sci-fi, pretty diverse cast of characters. We have to be a revolution and destroy the evil dictator who's in charge. And there's a lot of espionage. And in the second one, there's a lot of action. I really liked both of them. Book one, they make some bad decisions. I, I don't think we can argue that those are good decisions that they make, especially the results of those decisions. Book two, I think because there is less covert operations happening, fewer covert operations happening, it's better. It's just better. There's more action. I feel like the series was always meant to be action. That's how it felt to me. Like they had a lot of skills that would be useful in battle scenes. And that's something you get a bit more of in book two. And they're just really good fun. I would recommend them. I wouldn't have said that at the end of book one. I would have been like, this is fine. You don't need to read this. I think with book two combined, read them back to back. Uh, it's a much more powerful story. I wasn't expecting how emotional I got. Uh, and I think it's really strong. I would I would recommend, which is interesting because I really didn't like Goldilocks, which is Laura Lamb's other sci-fi. So I think I needed the more fantasy sci-fi, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? That kind of, I don't, I don't really care about actual human beings go to space. I want the more Star Wars side of things. Is there a word for that? I'm sure there's a word for that. Tell me down in the comments below. <laughs> Speaking of sort of weird things, fantasy mixed with other things, sort of steampunk, the Clock Tour series by T. Kingfisher. Now I have a T. Kingfisher review either coming up in a couple of weeks. I've just filmed it. So the thumbnail will look very similar to whatever I've done for this one. But she writes wonderfully weird settings and Clock Tour is something that I kind of took a bit of a punt at. I listened to it on audiobook on script, not sponsored, but that that is what I did. And it was sort of just a, I need something to fill the time while I'm out walking the dog. And I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Again, it's kind of an unlikely group of people get together to do a thing uh, under duress and they have to go and find where these clock tours are coming from, which are like big steampunk demon fueled beasts that are ravaging the countryside. And that is an unusual duology in the sense that you really do need both books together. Book one ends on something of a cliffhanger. Not exactly, but it doesn't finish the story. Uh, and you definitely need both and they're nice and short, which I think is why that works. But very much enjoyed it. Emotional, good character development stuff, a nice romance involved in it. And in some ways kind of gross, which is something that I found really familiar in T. Kingfisher's work, is that just like sometimes things get a little bit gross. And you're like, oh, I didn't like that description of that. But it was vivid, very vivid. Um, I would recommend that duology if you were interested in something kind of steampunk-esque going on. More sci-fi, a lot of sci-fi duologies on this list, which I wasn't expecting. Um, Children of Time, Children of Ruin by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is the main Adrian Tchaikovsky I've ever read. I did read Doors of Eden, which is similar in vibe, but this is a duology. And again, we have two very distinct books. Uh, we have characters from the first book featuring in the second one, but uh, it's primarily two very different stories. So I'll talk mainly about the first book. They try and seed a world with uh, monkeys that will evolve very quickly and then will end up worshipping humanity. It's basically the goal of this like, somewhat questionable experiment they're doing. The monkeys end up not surviving and the thing that is accelerating evolution instead happens to spiders. So it's sort of a look at what would happen if intelligent life evolved in invertebrates. Spiders invertebrates? Or are they arachnids? Let's say arachnids, but there are some invertebrates going on as well. Um, and it's just a fascinating story. Um, and it's sort of dual, dual timelines almost, um, because we also have humanity trying to find a world to land on and they need to find a terraformed world. And this world just happens to be one and how they interact with each other. It's just so well written and such an interesting thing. And I could talk about it for hours with somebody else who'd read it. So I can't really talk to you about it because that would be spoilers. But some of the stuff that happens in it is just fantastic. And if you are someone who is scared of spiders, I personally am. I didn't find it super terrifying. I 
think I did the audiobook, which might have made a difference. But it's just, oh, just wonderful. And then the second book kind of follows a different different evolutionary path, I guess. And then Doors of Eden, which is a completely different book. But if you liked those ideas, you could also read Doors of Eden. Oh, phenomenal. I must reread them because just, I'm, I really want to. That's where I'm at. I really would like to reread those. I don't have any time to reread this year. I'm so sad. Some more YA sci-fi. This is the Mirage duology. Now I do have a review up for this. So again, I won't waffle for too long, but this is YA somewhat romance focused, but not super romance focused or sort of revolution focused. It's that classic YA kind of mix of ideas. Um, but we're talking about colonization. Uh, we're talking about uh, fake identities, having to take the identity of your colonizer, that kind of stuff. It's really fascinating. There was a bit of a time gap between book one and book two, and I was surprised by how much I enjoyed book two. Uh, and there was a lot of elements to it that really surprised me. So yes, I will link that video there and you can go and watch it because, oh, it's great and you should read read the duology if you want like a really solid YA duology to get your teeth into. Oh these are behind me but I didn't want to take it out because these shelves are a bit of a mess. Um, The Strange the Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor. I haven't reread these in years and I must, I must get to it because they are absolutely beautiful. I love Lainey Taylor's writing. Personally I don't find it too flowery. I know some people do so if that's something that irritates you bear that in mind. Beautiful, beautiful story of kind of traveling to a strange land and Oh, how much can I say without ruining it? Kind of finding the answers to what you believed to be true and finding finding out new things about yourself and about others. It's just wonderful. I, I recommend it highly. I will do a reread of it so I can recommend it more accurately. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful way fantasy duology. Asha, if you're watching this, this is your sign to read the sequel if you haven't already, because I know you haven't. I'm pretty sure you haven't. I can check your TBR, but you should read the sequel. I'll do a reread with you. We'll have a good time. These are a bit of a question mark for me because I know they are currently a duology, but I believe there are more books in the works. So take this with a pinch of salt. Don't come at me in the comments, but Vicious and Vengeful by B. Schwab. These are super villains, super villain origin story, complicated. What does it mean to be a villain? What does it mean to be a hero? V. Schwab getting a bit philosophical, but also some action and some, particularly in the second book, badass ladies doing badass stuff. Again, second book much stronger. Also a weird thing, second books tend to feature women more. Don't know what that is, but they do. Might end up being more of a series of novels that all intersect, in which case I'll move it to another video. We'll see. I believe this is called the State of Sorrow duology. I'm not certain. This is by Melinda Salisbury and this is YA, but it's YA fantasy in a way that I hadn't really read it before. It's quite low magic and it's about a main character who, especially in book one, needs to try and win an election. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff to do with family trauma and generational trauma. That's something that I've been really like looking into lately in a lot of the media I consume. I just find that very interesting. Sometimes themes just come out to me. This is really beautifully written. The duology is very strong. The second book is just as strong as the first. I think they really come as a pair. I love the main character in this. And I think that's what really sells it for me is that Sorrow is just such a fantastic main character and the struggles and the things that she goes through in the series are just fantastic. And I like the idea of a fantasy duology, it's particularly a YA fantasy duology that looks at democratic elections, or democratic-ish, as opposed to monarchy. I find that interesting. Good times. I have a couple more that are novellas that came in pairs, and I think that's something that Tor is just doing a lot of lately. So we have Silver in the Wood. So we have Silver in the Wood and The Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. I talked about these a lot in 20... End of 2019, I think I read them in and I loved them. They're fantastic. They are kind of fable focused fantasy, which is a, try saying that five times fast. Um, it's something that fascinates me. It's really cool, queer, just a wonderful time, really. Uh, the second one is very different from the first one. They feel much more like I wanted to tell a different story of these same characters, which is always something I'm here for and I very much enjoyed. The other novella duology I would talk about is uh, actually bound up. I don't know where my copy of it is. Somewhere behind me, probably. But that is American Hippo by Sarah Gailey, which is River of Teeth and Taste of Marrow. Might be not in that order. I can't remember. Imagine if they farmed hippos instead of cows in America and we had cowboys, but they were hippo boys. You know, that kind of thing. And they're just wonderful. And again, very clear, good story, two different stories, but they follow the same characters and you get just a little bit more emotional depth out of them. In the case of that one, I think book one is stronger. Same with Silver in the Woods. So maybe with novellas, book one with novels, book two. Who knows? We could track these trends forever. I know I've also read the... 
I can't remember what it's called. I will stick the covers up. Sorry, Judith. Um, but there is a something about music and goblins that I read and I found the second one really beautiful and they're kind of also to do with mental health. I haven't read them recently enough to be able to really confidently recommend them, but I remember liking them a lot. I'm trying to think if there are any others that I haven't mentioned. Certainly not behind me, I don't think. No, I think that I think that might be my full list. Editing Judith can put more in if she thinks of anything. So yeah, as you can tell, I like a lot of duologies. I think they are strong and I like examining the the route that authors take to do a second book and what, what they really want to do and whether it was planned as a second book or if it was something that just happened. Was there another story these characters really wanted to tell? I don't know. I'd be interested to find out if you're a person who's written a duology and let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these? Do you have a favourite duology that I haven't mentioned? Let me know down in the comments below. Are there any unfinished duologies that you're excited to read the second one of? Maybe we'll revisit this list in a year or so. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have great chats about books. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. I only have the second book up here, but the text... Oh no, I closed my tab with my duologies list. It's just wonderful. Did I spill tea on this shelf? I've got crunkly knees.